Fast forward about 300 years, and let's talk about Brahms and 19th century Romanticism. This was a very important era for me to study, because falling in love with the sweeping, epic works of Brahms, Mahler, Gamble Putty, Wagner, Dubon, Ausfirm, Splendenschlitt, Sansa, Krastkrenbon, Friedige Dangle Dungle Bar, Steinborn, Neck Thresher, Applebanger, Berlioz, Grandish Grundwald Nars, Beltabasser, Kirstlich Imbel Eisenbahnwagen, Guten Abend bitte, eine Nürnberger Bratwurstel, Schumann, Gisbert mit zwei Marken Lube Hunsfurt, Gumbrabe Schonendanke, Kaltschleich, Mittelracker von Hartkopf auf Ulm, was one of the factors which eventually led me to abandoning the rock scene to pursue music at the collegiate level. The Romantic movement, which rippled through arts and culture in the 19th century, idealized nature, raw human emotion, and again, drawing inspiration from the past, this time medieval aesthetics. This is in part a revolt against the rise of industrialism and the separation of man from nature. The Romantic era musical aesthetics expanded from the classical era to include larger forms, larger orchestras, more detailed orchestration, and expanded tonality. This era saw the symphonic tone poems of Franz Liszt, the delicate lilting solo piano works of Frederick Chopin, the pastoral symphonies of Jean Sibelius and Antonin Dvorak, the Germanic folklore-based operas of Richard Wagner, and the old-fashioned art music of Johann Brahms. Art music essentially means non-programmatic music. On a personal note, Brahms is one of my favorite composers, and I hold a special affection for his chamber works, particularly Opus 120, Clarinet Sonatas number one and two. I chose to compose a sonata for horn and piano. I chose this medium because there are a great number of horn works that I admire, and the horn is a well-suited, dynamic solo instrument with a wide and colorful range. Not to mention, I played horn and trombone, and I'm well aware of the idiosyncrasies of brass instruments. I wanted to create an intimate dialogue between the two instruments, using counterpoint and thematic development. This medium also allowed me to practice my piano accompaniment writing, something that I have always struggled with. This work is primarily an exercise in thematic development, i.e., how many ways can I manipulate through the use of augmentation, diminution, inversion, and other contrapuntal devices this opening theme, stated first in the horn, the motif returns here, here. Thank you. 